वेलकम टू अवर चैनल इलेक्ट्रॉनिक्स ऑन व्हील थैंक यू फॉर योर सपोर्ट प्लीज लाइक कमेंट एंड सब्सक्राइब वी हैव ऑब्जर्व वन थिंग इफ यू डू नॉट आस्क यू टू लाइक एंड कमेंट देन यू डू नॉट लाइक एंड इट सीम्स दैट देर इज नो वैल्यू ऑफ द फ्री कंटेंट प्लीज डू नॉट डू लाइक दिस इफ यू लाइक द कंटेंट ऑफ द चैनल प्लीज लाइक कमेंट एंड सब्सक्राइब सो ऑन द लास्ट वीडियो ऑफ द चार्जिंग सिस्टम वी गोट टू कमेंट्स एंड द फर्स्ट कमेंट इज कैन यू प्लीज मेक वन वीडियो ऑन हाउ टू ड्रॉ and read the schematic diagram of any function of the vehicle and second comment is that there is no voice in the video so in this video we will try to address these two queries the topic will remain same so let's start in this video we will try to cover the following topics so first is what is the charging system why the charging system is required then we will try to understand what are the main components of the charging system in this particular topic we will try to understand also one thing that what are the design thought process behind any system not only the charging system here we will take the example of charging system but as a common understanding or generic understanding what is the thought process of designing any system that we will try to understand then fourth one is the how the charging system works so what are the operation what are the different cases in the charging system that we will try to understand and the fifth one is we will try to take one example of charging system wiring diagram and we will try to understand that how to read the schematic and in this last topic we will take few interview questions as well where we will try to understand that what type of interview question is asked on the charging system so however in this whole video of 15 to 20 minutes we will take multiple interview question which is asked in many interviews so let's start with the first topic that is what is the charging system so charging system is a system which converts the mechanical energy to electrical energy so from where this mechanical energy comes so this comes from the engine and this energy is converted to electrical energy by the alternator what is the purpose of this electrical energy why we are converting this energy from mechanical to electrical energy so the, this electrical energy has two purpose the first one is it supplies all the current demand made by the loads in the vehicle so what are the loads loads like headlamp horn window motors then you have audio system in your vehicle so all these loads require current and that demand is completed by the alternator second is to charge the battery so this alternator used to charge the battery as well so this is one of the interview question which is asked many times in interview that what is the role of alternator and if you say the alternator just to charge the battery this is not the complete answer of this question alternator charge the battery plus it supplies all the current demand made by the loads and loads like horn loads like headlamp i hope you understand what is the charging system and one more thing before moving forward i just want to tell you that so this charging system we are talking about the ice vehicle internal combustion engines the charging system if you take in electrical vehicle that is totally different so this is the block diagram of the charging system where the alternator is connected to different component so first is it is connected to battery this alternator so if you can see here this particular terminal is connected to battery then we have the different vehicle loads which is connected to this particular terminal then we have the charging lamp which is connected to the alternator through this ignition switch wire so we will try to understand in detail all these components in the upcoming slides so before that we will try to understand why the charging system is required in a vehicle so first thing the electrical energy is required to run the vehicle loads so vehicle loads we have discussed already that uh, headlamps your horn window motors audio system which is provided from the available battery in the vehicle so we have the 12 volt battery available in the vehicle from this 12 volt battery this electrical energy is provided to run the vehicle loads but there is a problem this 12 volt battery in ice vehicle cannot provide the power all the time without charging right so to charge the battery we need the charging system which is nothing but your alternator so i hope you understand why the charging system is required so this 12 volt battery required charging that's why we need some system to charge that battery 
and that's why this charging system is required so alternator is the main component which is used to charge the battery so as earlier i said so alternator not only charge the battery but it provides the supply to all the electrical loads in the vehicles as well so i hope you understand why the charging system is required in the ice vehicle now let's move to the main component of the charging system but before moving to the main component let's try to understand what is the design thought process to design any system so there are three steps in designing of any system so first step is requirement or you can say the output what you want to achieve from that system means output right so for example in case of charging system we need two things from the charging system first it should charge the battery and second thing it should provide the power to the electrical loads right in second step we will start defining the input we start defining the input or the component by which we want to achieve the output for example in charging system we want to charge the battery right it means we should be aware about the status of the battery whether the battery is charged discharge what is the voltage what is the current to get the status of the battery you need the sensor which is nothing but the battery sensor similarly for power supply to the electrical loads for this so you should be aware about the electrical loads how many electrical loads you are using in your vehicle what type of load they are what is the rating of those loads then only you can define the alternator ratings right so all these information comes into the input step now come to the next step that is our process and this is very important step so where you need the processing of the input right to get the desired data or to get the desired results so for example in our case you need the battery status right so by battery sensor we get the input but who will process the data and come to conclusion that battery is charged or discharged it is our issue or some memory which is taking some decision right so to design any system these are the three steps which are very necessary first is input then second is process then output so based on these design parameters we will see the main component of the charging system if you have any question in this slide please comment in the comment box i will try to answer your question so let's see what are the main component of the charging system so first is the battery as we discussed then second is fusible link or fuses so can you comment what is the difference between fusible link and fuses then third is ignition switch fourth is alternator and fifth is warning lamp on the cluster we will see the function of all these components in detail in upcoming slides you can see on the right side that how these components are placed or packaged in the vehicle so this is your battery then you have this fusible links then you have the fuse box then you have the ignition switch or the switch to start your vehicle then you have the indicator in technical terms we define it tail tail so in the instrument cluster these tail tail will come and then we have the relay we will see that whether this relay is required however we have taken very basic circuit of charging system so we are not using the relay and then you have the regulator and alternator in regulator in case of regulator also i want to say that now the alternators are very modern and this regulator is not a separate part this is the inbuilt part of alternator now we will try to understand the purpose of each component in charging system so first component is battery battery is used to store the energy uh, battery provides the power supply to electrical loads in vehicle the most important of work of the battery is to supply the power to the starter motor to start your engine so that is the most important work and the alternator charge the battery when engine is running so this is what alternator does and alternator charge the battery when battery soc goes below the certain level not all the time so you can see in your left side this is the actual battery component and uh, here you can see this is a 12 volt battery we are talking about uh, the passenger vehicles in commercial vehicle it is 24 volt and you can see here some rating is given 63 ah what does it mean 63 amps of current can be delivered for one hour this is the meaning there is a deeper technical understanding for of these ratings we will take in a separate video 
to understand in Deepak. As of now, you can just understand that if the rating is given, that it means that 70 AH, 70 amps of current uh, can be delivered for a one hour. Then you can see the representation in wiring diagram. So this is how we represent in wiring diagram. You can see. So here you see it is written like 12 volt, which is for the passenger vehicle and 72 AH. So 72 AH means that 72 amps of current can be provided for one hour. So these symbols in the wiring diagram, you can use any software. They will remain same more or less then let's move to the second component that is fusible links and fuses fuse and fusible links are used to protect the circuit uh, or the wiring in the system to protect by the overcurrents so left side you can see uh, th this is the actual component it looks like and this is your filament in the fuse so whenever the fuse goes blown then this filament gets break and this is how you represent in wiring diagram so this is mega fuse. This is how the fuse element is represented in the wiring diagram. Let's move to the third component that is ignition switch uh, and ignition switch is responsible to crank your vehicle by providing the voltage to the starter motor. So when ignition switch is on position, so battery current energizes the alternator. So actually this switch is used to switch the su supply from one position to other position. Like we have three main supply, accessory supply, ignition supply, restart and crank so you can see this particular switch here you can see lock is nothing but the off and this is how your ignition switch is shown in wiring diagram so lock is nothing but off position then accessory position this is this one this one ignition on and then start or the crank position is nothing but this is the position so here on the right side you can see some of the terminal naming also t30 t15 and t50 can you please comment in the comment box what is the standard by which these terminal are taken t30 t15 and t50 so the if i give you the basic understanding of these t30 t15 and t50 so t30 which means it is a direct supply from the battery t15 is it is a battery positive supply but through the this ignition switch and T50 is nothing but it is going to the starter motor to, to start the engine. We will see in the wiring diagram when we will discuss about the complete wiring diagram then you will understand it better what is T30, T15 and T50. The fourth component is alternator. This is the main component of your charging system which converts your mechanical energy from engine and it is connected through this grooved drive belt on a pulley arrangement kind of arrangement and alternator is generating AC current and which is converted to the DC current by the rectifier. Let's see the main component of the charging system. The component, the actual component, this is how it looks like. So you can see the B positive and this is a one connector which is used to take the different signal from the alternator and this is very basic uh, wiring diagram of the alternator. So here we have shown only two terminals B positive uh, this is nothing but this one and one particular signal which is for the charging lamp. So here these are the two terminal we have shown but in advanced alternator there might be many other uh, signals which is going for the battery current sensor and other stuff but we will not discuss here if you understand the basic concept of alternator then you can relate with the ECU as well. So to be honest when you are creating the wiring diagram with ECU that would be more easy compared to this type of wiring diagram where you are not using the issue because you are controlling all the things from the component only. So this is your voltage regulator as a part of uh, alternator we discussed in the main component. So without regulator the alternator will always operate as per engine RPM which may damage your components by overcharging or the undercharging and regulator controls the alternator output to prevent the overcharging or undercharging it is a inbuilt component of the alternator and as you know that engine rpm can change based on the acceleration and if the more rpm is there then your alternator will be generating more current more voltage to regulate that particular voltage we need the regulator so that we get a we get a value in certain range not not very high and not very uh, low so this is how it looks like so this is the voltage regulator which we are talking about and this is how it looks like in a ic form 
and this is the output from the alternator the fifth one is the indicator that is nothing but the warning lamp the fifth component is the indicator or the warning lamp this lamp is used to show the battery charging status it is normally off but it lights when the ignition is turned on for a check for the lamp circuit and this particular check is we call it self test check the second it will light when engine is running and your vehicle battery is not charging or under charging condition so actual component you will see that it will look like a battery symbol and here on the cluster you will see those battery symbol or tail tail here but the actual component or the this would be a one led which is on the instrument cluster so this is how it looks like so next topic is how the charging system works we'll try to explain it in the next video and that how the system is connected how these positions are working if you like the content of this video please like and subscribe if you need next video on this that how charging system works and you want me to explain these three different cases uh, case one ignition switch off and on then case two uh, we have ignition switch on engine off and then is that ignition switch start and crank position and then we have some interview question so if you want to make this next video please like subscribe and comment thank you for your time